Well, hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making a simple arbour to hold some gear cutters and the history behind that is those of you that are following along with my mill head sort of restoration where I'm trying to get an ISO 30 spindle to fit in the miller machine and you'll have seen that I had some difficulties getting my existing rack to mesh with sorry my existing pinion to mesh with the rack on the ISO 30 spindle and I planned to cut the rack on the shaper and the more I've thought about that and some good comments that's not the right way to go so what I've decided on is we're going to actually cut the pinion and get the pinion to fit the new rack so that's what we're going to do um, I've had a very kind viewer gift from one of my subscribers which is a full set of gear cutters and what we're going to do is in this video is make a arbor to fit the gear cutters onto so that we can then put that in the miller machine and use that to cut the pinion and also for future for any other gear cutting that I want to do so that's all well and good just looking what else we've got um, I think that's everything on the board so what you can see at the bottom is I've done some rough measuring up of the gear, gear cutters themselves drawn myself a bit of a sketch in terms of what we're going to go and produce so I'm just going to source some stock and I'll join you at the lathe just shortly when we're starting to make the arbor. Okay, so we've got a lump of stock and we're going to load that into the three jaw chuck. Just check what my stick out. I can't go any further back than that because it won't go in. any deeper than that so that's us with some stock loaded up so I'll move the camera and we'll start turning our arbor Okay, so we've got our stock in the chuck, we've got our gear cutter, so what we want is an arbor that will accept the gear cutters on one end and on the other end will go into an ER32 collet chuck, so that's how I'm going to do this initial sort of rough and ready arbor ready. So we're going to do that and see how we get on. The importance of this being that the diameter that the gear sits on and the diode that sits in the collet chuck need to be turned ideally in the same setup so that they're perfectly concentric with each other to avoid any eccentricity of the gear cutter so there will be eccentricity anyway because it's going to go into an ER32 collet system but we'll try and minimise it
Okay, I'm going to do something just for fun that I've not done for many, many years, and especially on a centre lathe, more so on an auto or a turret lathe. So I don't have a left hand tool small enough to dive into this gap that I need. Now I could waste a load more material making the gap bigger so that I put a slightly larger tool in, but I do have this tool which is a DCMT11 insert. And what I've done is you'll see I've put it in upside down. I can just get it on centre line with the tool right at the top of the holder. And basically what we're going to do now is run the lathe in reverse. And we're going to go in and turn this back end with the lathe running in reverse using this tool. And we're certainly going to give it a try. Now what I've done is set my carriage stop so that I can't mistakenly plough the back edge of the tool into this shoulder. So hopefully that's all fairly safe. So we'll get set back up and see what happens. Okay, we've switched the part round, we've put it in the chuck the other way, we've got three bits of aluminium in the jaws so that we don't mar up the collet surface. What that means is it's running slightly eccentric but I'm not bothered about that and I've tapped it up against the front of the jaws with a copper mallet just gently to make sure that actually it's running okay. So we're going to face this off to length now and then drill and tap for the holding bolt. Okay, we've put our billet back in the chuck. I've just faced it and we're now going to machine 
the cap, the retaining cap for the end of the end of the arbor. Okay, we've got our part set up in collet block in the mill. We've got a 6mm slot drill. I've touched on the surface so I, and I've centered up. I know I'm on center line just using my edge finder. I've touched on the surface so I know my Z, Z0. I now want to find my X distance away from the face because I don't want to cut into the location face and I'm going to use the paper method. So we'll just have a look at that. There we go, I know that bit of paper is fourth hour thick, so I now know I'm fourth hour off my face. And I'm gonna set my X zero at that, and I'm just gonna to work to that zero point, so I know I'm always fourth hour clear of the location face. So I'll just reposition the camera and we will set about, in fact I'll leave the camera where it is, I think I can work around it. We'll set about machining our slot for the key. So we've just got a bit of 8mm key steel in the vise and we need to get that down to 6mm so I'm just going to take all the material off the top and off one side. Okay, we've just soft soldered our key into place, nice and easy, I didn't film that, it was very quick. I'm just going to trial fit 
my gear onto the whole assembly now there we go and we've just got some clearance off the face and off the key from the gear for the top cap to sit in position so the next job now is to give this a thorough degrease and we're going to pop it in some chemical black and I'll bring you back when we've done that well there we go guys that's got our gear cutting arbor complete so that will be ideal for the job that I need to do to get my milling machine with the ISO 30 spindle in it so pleased with that pleased how that's come out nice quick job nice and simple and hopefully another tool in the toolkit well there we go guys that gets us to the end of another episode as I just said happy with that nice quick easy simple job but hopefully a couple of tips in there maybe for people around using tools upside down using parting tools to give you an area clearance when you're turning two diameters each side of a shoulder and wanting them concentric just bits and bobs like that nothing too flashy but maybe some tips that people haven't thought of or seen and as I said I didn't have to do it that way I've got other tools high speed steel tools I could have used to turn the back diameter and things like that but I thought I'd do it that way just to show a different way of thinking and the fact that don't be constrained by what you've got look at your right hand tools as long as you can get them upside down and still get them on centre line guess what you've got another load of tools to have a go at so all useful all information and hopefully you've enjoyed that and we'll close this episode out so thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else <laughs>